Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be back after a short week of vacation. And today I will resume the series on building an application uh, with Spring Data New 4J 6, which is the new major version of Spring Data New 4J, the official object graph mapper for New 4J in Java. Uh, so I'm just checking one thing. I'm just checking the sound because there seems to be an issue. I have another laptop right next to me, so I'm going to check there. So bear with me while I'm doing that because for some reason I don't hear anything. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me check real quick. Oh, yeah, of course. No, it's all fine. As usual, my mistake. <laughs> so, as I was saying, I started uh, two weeks ago a series, a new series on Spring Data New 4G6. And thank you, Asim, on YouTube for confirming that it works well. And so the idea, and I will show first a graph of something I created manually, and I would like you know to not do that manually anymore, as my um, as my job involves, you know, watching what the community is doing uh, with uh, Neo4j. And so let me share my screen. So I have this, uh, I mean, it looks a bit messy from here, but I've manually maintained. So to be honest, this is not the actual version I'm using. The actual version I'm using is a spreadsheet. <laughs> and I'm hopeful. I hope that at some point I will switch to that graph version so that people, you know, especially at Neo4j, right, we are quite familiar with graph databases, <laughs> Neo4j itself, obviously. So the idea here is to, you know, watch um, official and third party drivers, libraries, and uh, framework integrations for Neo4j. That's part, you know, of my job watching what the community does, see how we can help. We can help them make sure that you know whatever changes on the driver front uh, that is well communicated to the community and vice versa. You know, if the community has questions, uh, trying to do my best to to answer them. And so I have this graph, you know, with the pro programming languages used for 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 those libraries. Uh, you know, the bold version. If this is using the bold protocol with the driver. Um, HTTP if it's just HTTP, because as you know, Neo4j historically just had REST APIs and started with 3.0. Uh, the bulk protocol was introduced, which is a compact binary uh, protocol over TCP to be able you know, to run Cypher queries. And of course, the protocol has evolved since 3.0 uh, with Neo4j. We are currently at 4.2 with the Neo4j product. And uh, so the bold protocol has been aligned with that. So you have one, two, three, one, two, three, and therefore four, one, four, two. And so depending and on the you know on the project, some uh, have been stuck, so to say, with some bold so, so older bold versions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if I can get this information, it's always interesting to see. And maybe you know at some point, uh, chat, reach out to the maintainers and say, hey, how, how can we help? Uh, who can we help with, with your project so that it now supports uh, more, most, more recent versions of Bolt, for instance. But so the idea here, instead of doing this first in a spreadsheet and second manually uh, into a graph, I would like to have a simple app. You know, it doesn't have to be a very complex app, but to be able to input that kind of data and maybe display it directly. So I, I don't have to switch between the application and your 4 g desktop, for instance. So that's the idea I had, and that's what I started with uh, two weeks ago. And as I said last week, I was in vacation, so I had not resumed that effort. So here is a yeah. So here is the idea. I basically, I have a, a map of the ecosystem of official and third-party drivers, library built on top of drivers, and framework integrations. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask. I will do my best to watch that while I'm also um, coding, basically. And so to the code. Obviously, it's a Spring Data Neo 4J6 series. So I'm going to you know, develop with Spring Data Neo 4J6. So I started very basically you know, going to start.spring.io, 
download the project. So I, I won't download it again because I already have it here and I already did it last time, but you know, I just uh, maybe going to the full screen length. I need new 4 j and I wanted a REST API because my idea was to have a REST API in a small front-end application. And I will do both, by the way, during the, this series. I will not only focus on Spring Data Neo 4J, I will also try to build a full application. And so I have REST repositories, for instance, and you know that's more or less what I downloaded last time, I believe, if my memory doesn't fail me. And so, yes, that's what we, that's what we ended up, and then, of course, our start and and I, you know, I cheated a little bit because last time I was a bit stuck, but mostly because my brain was tired and the week of vacation afterwards. But um, yeah, my my modeling was not great. So I there was this notion of Neo 4J driver, which is still there, but I, I've I've changed a few things. So let's go through everything I have right now, which is which is a bit different, which has evolved a little bit because I spent maybe 30 minutes uh, yesterday on, you know, trying to, to, to make everything work with the, with the basic modeling I have. So at the center of everything so far, it's called driver for lack of a better name. Maybe I will find a better name at some point because, you know, for, to me, driver is a project that focuses on the transport bit, maybe HTTP with the Cypher transactional endpoint or bolt but nothing else you know like if you build an ogm for me it wouldn't really be a driver right that would be something probably built on top an http client uh either uh for neo4j or to even generic http client or bolt driver right for me i like several layers so maybe driver is not the best names but for now i'm just gonna focus on that part and then maybe i will introduce all the nodes to define, you know, these layers of abstractions, basically, because driver for me is the, like the lowest level of abstraction you can have, which would encapsulate either the HTTP cipher transactional endpoint or the Bolt protocol bits, or both. And things can be built on top of it, like if you can have a generic OGM, so object graph mapper, like what Spring Data Neo 4J6 is. I mean, Spring Data Neo 4J in general, it's an OGM which depends on the Java Bolt driver. And of course, you can imagine uh, some extra libraries if I were. So Spring Data New 4J is obviously well integrated with, um, you know, the Spring framework, the Spring uh, portfolio, but it, al it also has, uh, you know, integrations with uh, the Java Enterprise uh, Edition ecosystem. And there are several examples. Uh, maybe I can find that at the end of the at the end of the stream, if that's interest people, just to find some pointers to that. So, um, but so yeah, you could imagine. I don't know. Let, let's take the PHP example because that's where I come from. I started my career with PHP. That's something that is still close to my heart. Um, you could have a PHP driver for Bolt. Then on top of it, you could have an OGM, and then on top of that, you could have thin integrations for you know various PHP frameworks like Laravel, Symfony. Zen framework and what have you, you know. So those are th really three different layers. And I don't think at the moment Neo4j driver, so the class I've written here, models that well. For me, this one, for now at least, and we will see whether we can refactor that or evolve the model to, to support all those layers. But for me, that is mostly concerned with the lowest layer of abstraction. And so enough talking and let's show some more code. So the idea here, you have a URI for the project, maybe a, Git, a link to a GitHub repository, GitLab repository or what have you. Whether it's official or not, so official means uh, Neo4j uh, supports it, uh, basically a part of the GitHub Neo4j organization. Because yeah, there are some, you know, we have some Neo4j Labs project, for instance, but you know, the, the, the support is not, the support guarantees are not the same. So. There are some, maybe Boolean is a bit too naive at this point, but I want to start simple. And then something I changed, which was not there uh, two weeks ago, is this uh, driver supported transport. And it's a list because indeed a uh, driver can support several, uh, several transports. So at the moment, and you can see it at relationship. So 
Like two weeks ago, that part hasn't changed. So yeah, maybe, let, me, let me go through the annotations because that's also an interesting bit. Neo4j driver is mapped to a node. And so the only entities, top level entities you can have with Spring Data Neo4j6 are nodes. You, can, you don't have uh, those relationship entities anymore. So I have this node, the primary name, the primary label will be driver because by default it's derived from the class name, but I don't want that in that case. I want a UID, so in that case, the framework will take care of generating a UID when I persist the node, and then you know persist it with the UID and return the entity with the value. Uh, as you can see, uh, the rest of the fields are final because I'm using a constructor for that. I'm trying to have immutable entities, so I have URI, official, and supported transport, and then I use this withers as the documentation uh, name name. So withers, you know, with blah, 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 with my field. And the framework will be, the Spring Data Neo4j framework will be able to pick those up and uh, add the values that are computed later. So in that case, in my case, because it's a generated value, of course, whenever the UID has been uh, created and persisted, then it will enrich uh, my Neo4j driver instance with that value by uh, detecting the with ID and calling it. And in that case, I just re I just reuse the same constructor and pass the ID. And that way, all the rest is uh, fully immutable. And uh, here I'm just creating, uh, I'm just passing the extra ID. And for the equals hash code, I just check my business field, so to say, not the technical ID. So same for you know, hash code, of course, and two, three. And so, of course, you can have relationships. They are just not. Uh, they are just not uh, entities, top-level entities. So let's have a look at this. So it's a list of driver-supported transport, and the type is support. So my driver with support Bolt, with support HTTP, and we'll see how I've modeled that so far. So as you can see, that's a change from Spring Data New 4J5. If you're familiar with Spring Data New 4J5, um, I'm using relationship properties. It's just a way to aggregate some reusable relationship properties. And by reusable, I mean you can use this driver supported transport with different entities, with different entities. So the target node uh, must be of the same type, but you can reuse that regardless of the start node, right? So in my case, I've imagined, so again, that might be subject to change later. But it's better to get started than you know being stuck with a blank page forever. So the idea here is uh, so it's mostly relevant for Bolt at this point. So maybe not a good choice again. But you know no model is perfect. The idea you would have a driver for now that supports a specific transport, and I will get to that soon. But with specific versions, so v1, v2, v3, v4, 0, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, etc. For Bolt. And of course, the list can remain empty for HTTP. Or we could think about, you know, Jolt, which is a new JSON serialization format uh, when you run Cypher queries, which makes it easier to to extract, to deserialize uh, the, the JSON results in a more type safe way. So more matching what Bolt does already. So with more richer uh, typing information. And so this, you know, is just a way to describe what uh, properties the relationship has. The start node is, of course, derived from my entity here. So that's the start node, because the relationship says it's outgoing, so that my start node goes from the in the neo 4 driver instance to the target node, which is driver transport. And I have these extra properties. And equals hash code, as usual, as you can see, is based on the fields that are of interest, so versions and transport. And then if I go to my target node, driver transport is something quite uh, simple. It's just, I mean, for now, only uh, an enum. So an enum is already supported out of the box. So it's either HTTP or Bolt. So for now, that's uh, simple enough for me. And as you can see, this time I interestingly, so it's a node, of course, so there will be a label called transport. And the ID here is not generated. There is no generated like uh, what I have on the Neo4j driver entity. 
because it's a natural if you in you know in terms of relational database uh, structure we could we would, we would say it's a natural natural primary key right it's a natural primary key i i can have only two nodes in my graph which are http and bold and then the versions will be carried by the relationship so the way i've modeled that so far is i will have one node called http one node called bold then my drive various drivers linked to those nodes and those re those links those relationship would carry the versions that they support one to i mean zero too many versions zero for http one too many versions for bold and that's what my model look uh, so far so and interestingly in that case my equals hash code and that's a discussion i had with uh, with michael and garrett uh, yesterday because i was not completely sure but no actually it's completely fine if you have a generated value, the best bet for your equals hash code is to, you know, write the equals hash code uh, regardless of the technical identifier. But in the case of a driver transport, so in the case here, I have a natural key. So I just say it's an ID, but I say, please don't generate it. I don't want the framework to handle it. I will handle it myself. And in that case, because it's not generated by the framework, uh, that's a perfect candidate for equal hash code because it's a natural key to, and it's a natural in my business domain to have this value to discriminate instances so to disc by discriminate i mean to distinguish entities from one another and so yes that's, those are the changes it's slightly more complex uh, from what i had uh, two weeks ago but it's uh, more in uh, more aligned with what i wanted to achieve and so let's look uh, Let's look at the test. So, sorry, I, I won't answer Slack right now. Uh, so, the test uh, almost is the same as before. So, I'm still using the JUnit 5 integration with test containers. So, for those who don't know, test containers is basically a user friendly API on top of Docker to say things very crudely. Um, and we have a new 4J module, thanks to, to Michael Simons, who all works in the Spring Data New 4J team. So. You have some. Um, it basically makes uh, makes life easier for you because you don't have to think about oh, how do I know whether my Docker image is ready to use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's built in in the Neo4j module. So if you look at my at my dependencies and start.spring.io, so the Spring initializer is smart enough. If I say I want test containers and Neo4j, it will include that specific module as well for you. Because it's using test containers and your 4J, chances are you want a new 4J module of test containers. And so that way, I'm just taking the latest for the two, starting uh, automatically because I have these test containers annotations that I forgot two weeks ago and at the last minute remembered to add it. Uh, so because I have this and this, uh, test containers will manage part of the life cycle of that uh, test class and make sure that the container is started before everything else starts. Then I have a very neat uh, Spring integration for testing with this dynamic property source, which come yeah, which come from Spring Test. So not even Spring Boot, it's Spring Framework thing. And I can uh, on the fly define properties that are, will be picked up by the, by the auto configuration of Spring Data New 4J. And so I can configure my URI to point to the to the expose URL of both of the container. Same thing for username and password. So that way, you know, with just this uh, test containers annotation, container annotation here, and dynamic property source, my application in the test uh, will automatically point to the Docker container, so which is exactly what I want. And so after each test, I want to make sure. So usually it depends, of course, of your application, but uh, at, at the very least, make sure the database is empty. Sometimes you also want to remove indices, etc. But that's uh, not something we'll uh, take care of right now. And then, so the way I test things usually, uh, so I'm using your repository. So it's the last thing I haven't shown. And I've taken, I usually don't take this approach. Usually I just extend directly, you know, some things like paging. And so if we look at the new 4 repository, uh, oh, actually, interesting. I thought, uh, yeah, I didn't want to do that. Uh, interesting. So the Neo4j repository is a richest repository you can use with Spring Data Neo4j. So it exposes most of the functionalities you want. 
But as far as I remember, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I wanted, on the contrary, to take the thinnest one, so the one with the least functionalities, which is, so here I'm now I'm in the Spring Data Commons, and you see the hierarchy. You have new for repository, which exposes you know, the create, read, update, delete functionalities, the paging and sorting functionalities, the query by example functionalities. Uh, and then if you look at paging and sorting, so the CRUD operations are actually exposed. Uh, and I will, yeah, I will share the, the GitHub repository at some point. For now, it's still private, but um, so thank you, Asim, for the question. I will, I will share it, no, no problem. And so if you look at the create, read, update, delete repository, which exposes, you know, the save, save all, find, et cetera, et cetera, um, you will see there is this uh, marker interface repository, which is the thinnest repository you can have. It just marks your interface as, hey, it's something Spring Data Neo4j should pick up for me, make sure it's uh, it's considered as a Spring Data repository. And that, I believe, what I wanted to do, and I completely missed it. So my driver repository, I will be much more conservative. And I will say it's a repository only. So at least now I, I got a, a way to show it. And I expose only the single operation I want. So usually I do what I've done before that, so which is use you know, the most uh, concrete repository. But that way you expose possibly many more operations, many more persistence operations that you would like to. So in that case, I'm super conservative. I start with uh, you know the highest in the in the type hierarchy, so which is the thinnest abstraction, and you know basically pick just the simplest. And so let's uh, let's have a look. So the test should still pass. We will see about that. And what the test does is, uh, so first, because you know, I assume that there is always a single Bolt and HTTP uh, node in the graph, I make sure Bolt is there because in my test case, I'm only concerned with Bolt. So I have this uh, Bolt transport that is saved not via a repository, because I really don't want to use the same level of abstraction as my test. I want to use something that is uh, independent of that. So that's why I use Neo4j template here, which allows me to save entities in a much more imperative way. So I'm just saying save this entity. So that gives me the ball transport. Then I want to manually create this uh, supported transport, so the relationship part of my domain uh, in a way. So I have for now only a single uh, link, which is a single transport with 4.2 to Bolt. And then the real uh, the real action happens here. So I have this uh, fake uh, repository that is not official and that supports what I've described above. And at the end, if the save work, if the save worked, um, I'm using template again because I don't want to use the repository to both read and write because I'm testing write at the moment. So I want to use something else, something independent from repositories to make sure the data before is ready and the data after is what I expect to look like. And so I'm using the template to fetch all the entities. There should be only one and it should be exactly equal to this. And because I've implemented equal such code as I've showed you, that should work. So just to make sure, Let's rerun because I've made a change. And let me hide this uh, screen sharing thing. And we will see some test containers logs, of course, because we're starting the container and then the test will, uh, will take over. So it's starting 4.2.0. Then the test actually starts and it passes. So that's great, that's exactly what I wanted. So, of course, if you have questions about anything I've shown so far, please uh, ask away and I will, uh, I will do my best to answer in time. So now, what do I want to do? Uh, so if I look again at my palm, hopefully I also have spring data rest or not. Oopsie. So what I want to do now is I also want to have a rest API um, for, you know, my front-end application, I will have a graphical user interface, so probably with Angular, because that's the thing I'm familiar with, and will expose the save operation, because you can imagine I will have some kind of basic forms, so maybe Angular is even <laughs> too much for that, but who knows, maybe maybe I will have, maybe the application will grow in complexity, I don't know, 
but Angular is something I'm familiar with anyway. So yeah, I need a REST API to basically expose uh, expose this um, this is a save operation. Okay, so let's add uh, let's add this. Uh, I believe there is a starter for Spring Data New 4J REST, so Spring Boot starter REST, I believe, or something like that. Spring Boot starter data REST. Yep. Thank you, thank you. So that should add the necessary starter with all the dependencies. Uh, so one question from Asim, and let me let me try to answer that. The question is: um, Is it possible to check data in your 4J test containers? And the answer is yes, and it, it, exactly what the test is doing here. So let me show again the test. So in the test here, I instantiate a container. And I configure my Spring Boot application, my Spring Data Neo4j application to point to that container. And what I do in the test is I write some data first because that's the data I need. I also use my the repository I'm testing to insert yet more data. And I run uh, I run the Neo4j template. Um, I run the Neo4j template to um, to find uh, the expected data. And so, in a way, that's how I see it. So that's how to check data. But then you added uh, precision by check. I mean, seeing data in test container. So the way you can do it is so it, we can look a little bit more in details about what the Neo4j container does. So let me download the sources. It will be a bit easier. But by default, I think by default, uh, Neo4j container, which is you know basically. Uh, work that is done that we don't have to do ourselves. I believe it will also not only uh, redirect, I mean, uh, forward the bolt port, but also the HTTP port. And that way you will have access to the browser. So you can have, you can go once the container is started, you could access a uh, Neo4j browser going to localhost uh, 7474 and see the Neo4j browser and, you know, basically have the same kind of interface than, than here. That's something you could do. But of course, if you want programmatic access to check anything, that's basically what, what it does here. I even use the raw driver, as you can see here. The raw driver, which is a Java driver, which is uh, managed as a bin thanks to the auto configuration bits of Spring Data and Neo4j. And you can also programmatic have very basic programmatic access with the driver and do whatever you want with it. So you have all these layers of abstraction you can use. You can also, yeah, as I said, just use the HTTP port to either call the REST API, see the new 4J browser, et cetera, et cetera. So plugin updates, yeah, not now. So thank you. And I see it answered your question. So I'm glad I could uh, clarify that. And so now let's uh, go with the REST API. So in that case, what do I want to do? I want to make sure that this is exposed as a REST API. And you know what? I'm just a, a human like everyone else, and I tend to I tend to forget things. So I have the reference docs of Spring Data Neo4j. I'm not sure they cover the REST part here, in which case we will try to go to rather the Spring Data Neo4j, Spring Data REST uh, reference docs, because I kind of don't remember. <laughs> so. So here is a very realistic, realistic part of what I usually do, which is Google the thing because I don't remember. But thank God, uh, Spring projects in general are very good reference guides. So it can look a bit dense at times, but I really recommend whenever you started with a new project, you're not familiar about reading through it. So Spring Data Rest, here we go. So the dependency stuff I already know because I have it. With Spring Boot, it's so easy anyway repository resources so that's something we have so in our case you know what let's put it like this maybe or oh, or oh, bad idea i don't know uh ta -ta -ta -ta. oh messed up my shortcut sorry about that so yeah here we go back yeah i, I will stay in full screen otherwise it's just too hard and there is even a guide, even better. So guide are, you know, hands-on, uh, hands-on 
exercises, so to say, or, or guides uh, to, 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 to show how, what you can do. So you need Spring Data, Neo4j, REST, so the starters for that. I have all of this, I have all of this, I'm super happy. I'm already doing that in my test, so that's perfect. I have some entities, I have repository already, so that's all fine. And oh, interesting, repository REST resource, cool. So that's a bit I was missing. Um, so, but before I do that, you know, I like to drive things by tests. So let me see the test part instead. So it's probably a bit after, uh, test the application. Here we go, yeah, curl, but no, no, thank you. I'd rather, I'd rather write a test for that. And it's just curl, no, okay, well, 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 it's fine, I guess. So I'm good, I'm gonna check real quick if there is anything about testing here. Test, 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 please, no. Okay, well, I, I will, I will somehow figure it out. We'll see, we'll, 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 we'll figure it out hopefully. So, uh, so the fun part is, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna create another test class because I'm not, I don't want to mix two different things in the same class because we're not testing exactly the same thing. Maybe I will just write driver API test or something. So that will probably be, so I will obviously need more or less the same things. So it's not gonna be a data Neo4j test because I don't think it, will, it would include the rest uh, stuff I need. But at the very least, let me add the same boilerplate for now. So I need a container, so I'm gonna reuse the same thing. We could think about trying to centralize this, but you know, uh, it's not worth the effort yet, in my opinion. Then I have this, I have, of course, this that I need. So for now it's fairly useless because I'm not using any spring stuff. So is there any data rest test? No, it does not exist. So I'm gonna be super, super vague. Spring Boot test is probably <laughs> the most, the biggest thing you can add. So it basically takes the whole beans, take everything. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that for now. That's a bit cheating, and I will of course get the driver injected just to make sure I start always my test with an empty database, regardless of what the tests do. So let me put that here. Uh, sorry. So here we go, and now I guess I can probably. Okay, so I think I think some people just joined the streams, and so the question is, what application are you making? So I'm gonna repeat that really briefly. I'm trying to make a map of the ecosystem of drivers, OGM, and framework integrations. So for now, I'm uh, maintaining that by hand in a spreadsheet, uh, and I've started manually importing that data into uh, into uh, a graph. But I want to automate that. Basically, I want an application that allows me to easily say, hey, I have uh, stumbled upon this GitHub project or GitLab project. It supports Spot or HTTP, or it's a library on top of an existing uh, driver. And you know, basically, I have some kind of form, and then it will help me visualize what things are going on, and I can share that with my colleagues. So yeah, basically, some kind of uh, map of the ecosystem official and uh, third party uh, components that help people write applications for Neo4j, whatever the language are, which is why I have the driver uh, driver abstraction here, which is a URI for the project, whether it's official or not, and what kind of transports they support, which is HTTP or Bolt, and which versions uh, in that case. And so right now, so I've done the domain. Uh, now I'm trying to expose an API, and then I will build a front end application today or probably next week. Um, to have this form and make sure I interact with uh, that API that I'm trying to expose right now. So hopefully that uh, answers your question. And yeah, so what I want, I want, I want, I want, uh, can I, can I, can I, can I instead, is there this auto configure? Uh, so there was mock MVC. I'm not sure that's the best thing I want. Maybe, maybe you know what, I'm gonna, 
I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try with REST template. So REST template is a utility to interact with. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if that. Uh, maybe I will fail. You know. So I, I'm glad that it answers your question. Could not auto wire. So let just. That's a bit strange because. Or maybe that's not REST template. So let me Google a little more before you know going deep down. So Spring Data REST testing. Testing in Spring Boot, uh, nice. REST client test. Oh, I just saw that in the quick description. REST client test, yay. What is this? That looks very, very interesting. Spring Boot 3.4, no, that's too old. It's 1.4.0, Spring Boot starter, Spring Boot starter test. REST template builder, I don't care, REST client test, what is this? In your REST client, build with REST template builder, you may use da 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 da. Yeah, no. Um, let me try to find something. I don't remember everything by heart, so uh, integration testing. Is there anything about. Yeah, and for some reason it's so big, I cannot see everything. So mock bin, no, no, no. Yeah, maybe, you know what, I'm going to be, um, no, I think I cannot do that. Uh, yeah, okay, I was thinking about this one, let's try. Let's try, the, let's try this approach instead. We'll see whether that makes sense or not. We'll see whether that blows up, I'm not completely sure. We'll try, and well, you know, if I fail, that can happen to everyone, hopefully. And you will, will forgive me for this, and I will try to come back next week with a fix if needed. So what do I do that? Because I want first to test um, my API, which is not there yet, but I'm like to drive by test. So I'm trying. If I cannot test it, I don't want to write the implementation. That's more or less uh, my approach every time. So let's remove the, just a matter of taste here, but let's remove that. So. Um, Save the save 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 the driver. Oh, except I'm thinking actually, actually actually I'm thinking about something here. Uh, I won't be able to do directly that. So let me let me uh, let me change my approach a little bit now that I'm thinking a little more clearly. As I was saying. I don't want to persist new transports. Transport should already be there. So if I send the payload with everything, I don't want Spring Data New 4J to, you know, save duplicates, um, duplicates port nodes and HTTP nodes. So instead of using that, I'm gonna check Spring Boot Starter, MVC, whatever, MVC or whatever. Do, 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 do. And what is the starter for that? Web, yeah. Spring Boot Starter Web. So that's exactly what I want. And I, I will write. I will write an actual controller. Yeah, I think so. Bye bye, uh, Spring Data REST. I will write an explicit controller because first I have to fetch the transport nodes and then uh, I have to save stuff. I don't want to save everything at once because I don't want to duplicate uh, those, those transport things. Uh, so let me reimport. And in that case, the testing part should be much easier. So I will keep this driver API thing. Uh, I could arguably mock the repository part. Uh, is there an MVC, web MVC test here like that? And I will, in that case, I will get rid of those. I will mock bin. I will mock which bin driver repository. And hopefully that should be enough. So that way it will, I don't have to you know stand up a container for every test because that would be a bit slow. And da -da 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 -dum. and then what do I want to do? I want to make sure that whenever an auto configure mock MVC, I guess this time should be nice. And I want uh, I want mock MVC. 
basically what I'm trying to do here, sorry if I struggle a little bit, but you know, that's part of, uh, <laughs> that wouldn't be any different if, if I was not live streaming. Uh, that's just the way it happens. Uh, so saves persist driver. And maybe actually I will have some kind of service now that I'm thinking about it, but uh, we'll see about that. So persist driver, I have mock MVC perform, I guess. It's been a while, I haven't used it, but perform request builder. So mock MVC request builder something, right? Yes, builders. I want a post to uh, slash driver for now for, for lack of a better content type will be JSON. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of the ugly name here. Then, so content type stuff, build, I guess, build request, what? Okay, context that's header, params, pass info, I don't care about this. Uh, let me see, it's been a while, it's been a while, it's been a while. So why is it unhappy? Okay, just because there is an exception, boom, okay. Why do this? What does this give me? That gives me a result and result and expect. Okay, we see result matchers, I believe. Um, so what should I check? For now, I'm going to be a bit lazy and I guess status should be enough. Maybe 201 or something is 201, like created. Uh, that's a bit lazy. Uh, that's I will probably refine the test when I have a clearer idea of what I'm trying to do. Uh, so obviously that should fail because there is a, it's just going to be a 404 or something. Let's see. Yeah, should have. A, let's check. Yeah, 404. So of course it doesn't work. Uh, so let's uh, at least it gets us uh, started. So that's maybe not the final version of the test, but as long as I have got an excuse to start, I'm happy with that. So driver API, do you want? Oh no, never, never. I want to do that by hand. So I will have a REST controller. And what do I want to do? I want to uh, save driver. And that will give me a uh, new 40 driver, sorry. Yeah, because there is a clash with the actual driver from the Bolt driver library. So that's why the naming, my naming is probably not ideal. That's a post mapping to um, slash, yeah, actually slash driver, but I can probably move that here. Those are about drivers. Um, bo 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 boom. it's been a while. Oh my God, it's been a while I haven't done that, done that. So at some point, of course, I will need a constructor. And I don't need the auto wired now because if there is a single constructor, Spring Framework will detect it and uh, manage dependencies for me. So I will, I might have a service. We'll see about that. Um, Okay, okay, at some point I will have something like this. Save driver, but that's not exactly what I want. Again, as I said, because I don't want uh, to create everything in the graph because some parts should already be there. So that's why I might instead, so let's do this. It will probably still fail because I'm not sure it will return properly. And I don't remember, it's been a while I haven't used uh, Spring Web, let's see. Yeah, so obviously it completely fails. No adapter for handler, it's better. 
Uh -huh. Not sure what that means. Uh, let me see. Hmm. Let me just check real quick. So I have this post mapping OS controller. Let's look at my application, Spring Boot application. That should be all I need. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Hey, you know what? Google to the rescue. Serving web content. What did I miss? So Spring Web, so timely if I don't care here. Get mapping and whatever. Or maybe because it's a void. Uh, da, 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 da. I want status. So Stack Overflow, you see that's how low I've uh, eaten. OK, there is just this. Perfect. Hopefully that works. Let's see. So I guess with just the void doesn't, I'm seriously out of date. Hopefully, so that looks fine. HTTP status dot created, right? Not even typed. Okay, I'm gonna cheat and have a look. Shouldn't it be created? Yes. It's created. Is that enough uh, so that Spring Web understands how to map this to the dispatcher servlet? Let's see. And again, that's not exactly what I want to do, but uh, nope. Is it better? No adapter for handler. OK, so that's because I'm still missing something here. Um, hmm. So. Spring MVC, sorry about that, but that's life. Failing, building REST services. Okay, that's more, more like it. So they have an entity, that's great. Happy. Spring Boot application, that I don't care. Then REST controller, post mapping. Okay, maybe that's what I should do instead, return the return the thing I'm uh, mapping. OK, why not? So let's try this instead. Let, let's remove this. Let's do this. And then return. If so was that what the guide says, then I'm going to trust it. So yeah, hopefully <laughs> we make some progress today. Else, you know. Does it do that? Is it closer to what I want to do? Or is it still complaining? Is it it's still complaining? Yay. So I'm missing some basic configuration stuff with uh, Spring Web. That's nice because, it, again, it's been a while I haven't used it. And you can tell, I guess. Uh, what else did I miss in here? So why would I need a controller advice? Yeah, that I don't care about it. Uh, yeah. Don't think I care about it at least. So REST controller, post mapping. Oh yeah. Okay, of course. Of course, of course. That's a request body. That's uh, I forgot to tell how to map the incoming payload. So hopefully that would explain why it was complaining. Let's see, does it make it happier? Nope, still complaining. So I'm gonna again resort to shameful ways, no adapter for handler. What am I missing here? Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm missing seriously. So if you guys know, if you people know, happy, please help. <laughs> I'm sending you know, a help signal here. So let's see what Stack Overflow says. Oh, XML configuration, great. We're back 15 years uh, again. Wow, that's some very, very old stuff. So nope. 
and nope. Okay, so great. All answers are completely useless. That's uh, quite reassuring. Oh, uh, nice trick. Let's look at recent uh, recent answers. So less than a year old. That looks more like what I have. Request mapping. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, now I finally get it because I made a stupid mistake. Value, what's what's value for? I use the value attribute. Hey, nice. I like when IntelliJ opens me another class, completely related to what I want to do. Okay, yeah, so completely failed, of course, you know, because everything is a string. So, of course, we don't know. So that's not what that's a request mapping should be used here if I want to centralize uh, the common bits of the path. So oopsie. Now it should be happy, hopefully. And I have this, I could put it in the post mapping directly, but I want it to be clever. And then I failed and wasted 15 minutes on a live stream. That's a life lesson here, I guess. Don't be clever. And hopefully, okay, some progress. It looks a bit different. 400, nice. So why is it 400? I'm not sure, but at least it's not 404. So it's picked up my controller. But, 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 HTTP message, not readable exception. Probably should say, yeah, because I have not given any payload. <laughs> Request body or something. Uh, where is it? Content type. I already sent the content type. Yeah. Content. Nice. Uh, content. And I want, and I want, and I want, and I want. I want the JSON for um, new new 4G driver. Some URI. Yeah, just gonna put a random one. Calls and list of new driver, sporty transport. It's an empty list. And HTTP, let's say. Come on. Oh, yeah, sorry. Quite a lot of parentheses, right? Okay, so let me extract this a bit because it's a bit unreadable at the moment. So I have this supported transport. I have this driver. Then I want to save it and I need JSON for that. That should return probably byte or byte array or string. I don't really care. Uh, so I think I can inject Jackson stuff, which was an object mapper, is it? Yes, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully that works. We'll see. Um, maybe there is a better way to do it, but right now, I don't know. Right value as bytes. Boom. And of course it can fail, but I'm in test, so I don't really care. And I don't really care about the specific exception, so I'm going to be even more vague. Okay. So let's see. First, maybe it will fail because the object mapper is not a managed bin, but uh, we'll see about that. In that case, I'm going to try to go quick. Yeah, so what happens? Type definition error. Simple type tries to cannot construct an instance of no creators like default constructors. Oh, man. What's going on? I see. Yeah, so OK. So the serialization bit is going to be problematic, and I probably won't have time to tackle that today because I don't have a default constructor. So I need to help Jackson understand, you know, 
So of course, immutable entities are nice and I'm gonna keep them. I just need some extra work to help Jackson understand how to reserialize it. So that's not that does not happen when I call this JSON stuff here, but that happens on the other side. So when when I call this, um, basically when it's trying to uh, deserialize the JSON into a new 4 driver instance, but for that, of course, it resolves everything. And the first thing it, it tries to instantiate, so the enum works as is, so that shouldn't be a problem, but then the next one is a driver transport. And of course, there is no, uh, there is no default constructor. So I will have to uh, instruct Jackson on how to serialize, deserialize this. Um, I have five minutes left, so I guess I won't be, I can start. <laughs> I, don't, I probably won't be done. And that's not even the full test I want to do, right? Because I will probably have, um, the idea I will have, and I will probably do that in the next stream or in between. It depends on whether you want me struggle a little more or if you'd rather have me progress on the app. I mean, seeing someone struggle is at least can be interesting to see how they try to solve the problem. Not saying that my way is especially uh, better than anyone else, but um, that's always interesting, maybe. Because what I'm gonna do surely is, so I will have a service here um, that will read the transport, read it from the database, and then making sure that I don't persist it again to the database. And then, um, and then of course, I will save the driver. So that the service will do read the transport from the database, set that to on the object, and uh, and then call the repository save. So there will be an abstraction between the repository and the REST controller. But first, I want to uh, solve this issue of JSON because that's going to be a blocking issue anyway, even before I introduce the service, which is why again. It's better to, to start with an imperfect test because there are always issues we don't expect and then refine the test later or introduce new tests. So it may be not TDD uh, in an academic sense, but I really needed an excuse to get started on that and uncover problems as early as possible. So I think I will stop there for today. So apologies uh, <laughs> for struggling, but well, that's what happens in real life. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, to prepare everything in advance and uh, pretend I know everything by heart. I don't, especially this. It's been a while I haven't used Spring Web. So uh, please comment what you would like to see next. Either I could continue next week, you know, troubleshooting those Jackson things, and I will, of course, this time prepare it a little more. So hopefully I will come up with solutions. Or I should start right away with a front-end application that will cause this REST API. And in the meantime, I will have fixed those Jackson issues and those controllers. So please tell me what you prefer uh, on YouTube or Twitch, wh wherever you're watching that. And uh, yeah, we'll act accordingly. So let's keep those two minutes left for questions. And I will sit down a little bit. So please, if you have any questions about wh what we've been talking about, please let me know. Um, and yeah, so let's keep these two minutes for questions for now. Uh, and while you're typing your questions, uh, I might check, I might check strategies for this Jackson problem. Jackson and immutable and yeah, objects is probably fine. So, hello, Beldung. Yes, that's my favorite friend. Favorite. <laughs> I always end up reading Beldung stuff. So, there is this way of using JSON Creator. Sure, why not? I mean, I'm not a purist. I don't mind annotating my domain. I know in some approaches that's considered wrong, but for my little application, I honestly don't really care. So yeah, there is this uh, this way with a JSON creator. That's something I could do indeed. Um, private constructor and a builder. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see about that. Okay, so maybe maybe I will try this JSON creator stuff. So either in the next room, if you want to see me continue on that, 
or in between before the next stream and then I will resume with the uh, front-end application. So I don't see any questions uh, right now. So I guess, so let me stop the screen sharing. And I want to thank you all for your patience. Uh, that's live coding with <laughs> all the live coding problems that could happen, you know, always, uh, always struggling a little bit, but uh, that's part of the, of the experience, right? Um, and I will see you next week. So, and depending on what you want, you can reach out to me on Twitter. I mean, my username is, uh, is F-B-I-V-I-L-L-E on GitHub and Twitter. So reach out to me on Twitter to see, to tell me what you would like to see next time in that series. And uh, I will either, you know, basically two options, start the front-end application consuming this REST API or, um, or continuing, you know, fixing the, the, the rests of that. And of course, uh, you know, that will just be a first part because the application is not complete yet. I need, you know, the other levels of abstraction I was talking about earlier, because right now I'm just thinking about the transport bits, like the GitHub projects that deal with either bolt the bulk protocol or the Cypher transactional endpoints, you know, the HTTP APIs, but there are, you know, OGMs out there. Like we, I had a series with uh, Gogum, the Gogum maintainer, Eric Solander, that we, I had uh, last year, at the end of last year. There are, of course, community OGMs like this that I want also to represent. So driver, the Neo4j driver is, might not be the right fit for that. And there are framework integrations. Like I know, I know for a fact there is um, some kind of um, active graph for Ruby, uh, active model for Ruby with the Neo4j. There is a Laravel integration. There is a Symfony integration in the PHP world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so again, the Neo4j driver might not be enough. And I will have to think about how to input that in an application. So I can say, hey, here is this project that depends on this actual driver project. So that's something else we will have to think about uh, in the subsequent episodes of that series. And I will stop there for now. So apologies for the struggles. I mean, half apologies, because you know that's just real life, real life when we're coding, we always face uh, unexpected problems. I will uh, solve them either in the next stream or in between, again, depends on what you tell me to do. And so have a good day, stay safe, and uh, see you next week. Thank you, everyone, and bye.